Well, I've gone several days without creating content because I did quite a quite a bit leading up to Hard to Kill, quite a bit um, just during the course of the rebrand from Bound for Glory up to now. And um, it was a real roller coaster for me. It was a roller coaster because at first when they announced that TNA was returning, uh, I was very much for it. Like it's crazy because I was also against them getting rid of the name TNA at one point. Uh, but they never really fully leaned into the rebrand like I wanted them to. So it just always kind of seemed like a knockoff version of what they used to be. So um, for those reasons, I was all about them uh, going back to TNA. It was something I was excited for. But it was a roller coaster because after kind of the initial high, we went to some pretty deep lows. I mean, just bad television. Um, social media was dead. You know, they weren't giving us anything. They weren't announcing matches, you know. And I was like, where's the content calendar? Like, where's what's the plan to get us excited, you know? And, you know, to their credit, they did do that. They kind of waited until the end of December and, you know, first week of January to get everyone <laughs> fired up and talking. But, uh, you know, to their credit, they they did. Um, I would have just loved to see a little more effort after the announcement. But, you know, that's neither here nor there, because right now we're in such a good place. And um, they're, they, they are truly addressing all of the areas that I wanted them to address. Like, there's no holes to what they're doing right now. The only thing that's up in the air, we're going to know this soon, is what does the TV show look like? You know, is it still dark and dreary and low budget? You know, or did they make those changes too? That's the only thing that's up in the air right now. Like if the show looks good, the lighting is good, the post-production is improved, you know, then we we got a hell of a show of, on our hands. But they've been fixing all the things that I've 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 wanted, just addressing the things I've wanted them to address. So it would be, you know, I would just be the biggest hypocrite in the world to get on here and and continue to knock what they're doing you know i and i hope people can respect that about me because all these things that i've been talking about for years please, please address this please address this and now that they are you know I, i'm a, i'm a happy camper now and you know for those who sit and think that i just talk negative for the freaking sake of it like i want to like i want to dislike what i'm watching I can understand that argument if I if I'm on here tearing up what they're doing now, but I'm not. You know, they they are doing what I've asked. So, I'm happy. I'm I'm a happy guy. I'm you know, I my gut tells me they're going to continue to handle social media a little bit like they were, um but I'm choosing in 2024 not to harp on it too much. I don't have to agree with it. You know, I do not work for them. So if that's how they feel they should handle, you know, social media, so be it. But there's so much other things that they're doing that I'm just very happy with. And going to the uh, the tapings, Hard to Kill, or the pay-per-view of Hard to Kill, and then the tapings for Snake Eyes, my, my love for this, com this company is truly, like, re-energized. You know, I just, um, it, it took me a while to really know, like, does this feel different or not? Because I'm comparing live wrestling to a television show, you know, and, it, and it's like, I won't really know until the, till the actual show comes out and I can compare the two, you know, comparing it, it's apples and oranges, the live experience versus watching on TV. But I do feel like the energy, the vibe, and everything is really different. And I and I mean, you can see it in the wrestlers. The TNA chants break out almost every single match. And I was really shocked that uh, the TV taping had almost as many people as Hard to Kill. And it's not because it's Vegas and it's a walk-up town. <laughs> the buzz was was pretty crazy and 
the palms is not like directly off the strip where you just have all these people walking and you can just you know what i'm saying like yeah i'm i'm sure that they were handing out some tickets somewhere but um they said this was the biggest gate that they've had and i and i don't doubt it i just i just couldn't believe how many people were in there i will say the palms is much smaller than these pictures are showing you <laughs> you know they've been showing a lot of um photos of the crowd you know like oh we're packed and and it just looks like it's to the roof of 5000 people like the the venue is so much smaller than <laughs> the pictures make it look but but it was still very very packed and uh, again you could see it on the wrestlers faces um but i'm not getting into spoilers of the of the tv taping i will say it was it was um you know not a lot of promos you know, uh, only you know, if, if someone spoke on the mic, it's because it's, it's someone that mattered. So it, it counted. Um, the matches were really fresh. You know, Tom Hannafin must be having a fucking field day in the booth um, with the first time ever matchups because, I mean, it was fresh, 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 fresh. And I don't mean first time ever for matchup like, you know, Jason Hotch versus fucking Johnny Swinger. You know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, some really intriguing matches, and uh, I'm just, I'm just excited, folks. I really am. Like, I, I feel, I feel that this is, it's going to start becoming the company that I just, I knew it had the potential to have ever since I started covering them. Uh, there's a lot more color contrast. You know, the ropes remained yellow. The, uh, you guys know, I hated the Impact screensaver with fucking passion that they had behind behind them while they were wrestling. I just thought it was some low budget fucking Microsoft paint bullshit. Um, but what they have right now is really nice. Um, I'm curious to see what the backstage looks like, the backstage interviews, because that's where that's an area where the lighting was very poor. Um, the editing editing was was very, very poor, you know, so I'm really curious to see what that looks like. But uh, the actual matches itself, I mean, very fresh. I think over the course of, you know, two days, there was one match there that I had seen before. Well, I guess, you know, because we already know Trinity and um, Jordan had a rematch, but I think there might have been one other that was kind of like something we had made, maybe seen before, but it's, um, you know, extremely fresh. And my, <sighs> what I was expecting with Snake Eyes was, a lot of fresh faces and fresh talent and new people we haven't seen before. What they did was kind of double down on their guys, which is good. That's kind of what I've been asking for, but I didn't expect it. This, this really over the past several years has not been a company that has like come across like, Hey, we're relying on our people to be the, be the guys and girls. It is, um, you know, the last several years has been like, who can we bring in to try to pop the number? But that was the energy I got this time that that they're like, hey, these are our signed guys. This is our roster. We're going to make these the stars. You know, it's just when I'm when I'm telling you, I have a lit. I have just this like list of I got to check this off and this off and this off. This is what I want them to do. This is what I want them to improve. Da, 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 da. Like they're just doing it. They weren't playing music between uh, the matches. You know, every time there was dead space, what people would tell me they're playing fucking We Own the Night between all the matches. Like, there was no music, no no nonsense. You know, Scott DeMore cut, cut out cut, cut a promo, and um, I don't know if it'll be on TV or not. Very passionate. I mean, he's a kind of a cringe guy to me, but the content of what he was saying was was very good and very passionate and, and got the people excited. You know, so the only the only farts over the weekend was that triple A announcement and 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 um teasing that you're giving us surprises when you weren't. And they did that at Snake Eyes too. Um you everyone's like looking towards the entrance ramp, like who's who's coming down that we haven't seen before, and it's you know, motherfuckers from the roster. So I thought they that is the area where I just thought they shit the bed. But um the overall experience was great. It was a lot of fun. We uh, had a nice conversation with Dr. Ross afterwards. <laughs> we, uh, you know, that, that was very productive. Um, he actually 
took care of my family very well. So, um, you know, I've got nothing. I'm not going to bury him on the pod, and and uh, he's made it clear that he has no ill feelings towards me. So it was um, it was a good convo. I got to meet Trinity. Um, my son met uh, Zaya Brookside, and uh, my daughter got a picture with Okada, which was uh, was really really cool. And and um, you know, the Okada match, uh, it was pretty cool to see him in the ring. You know, he cut a really nice little promo about TNA after. Um, and we got a chance to meet Jade and the walking weapon. They were in the food court uh, at the time we were eating. And my, uh, I had tweeted at Jade previously saying, oh, my son's in love with Jade, you know. And she retweeted and Josh said, I understand. And uh, it was cool because I walked up to him like, hey, you know, I'm the one that tweeted and my son's in love with you. And, and Jade immediately got up and was like, oh, you want to take a picture? You know, like she was so nice and took a picture with him. You know, and I apologized because I knew they were eating and all that and just didn't want to disturb them. But they were really cool, really kind. And uh, I will also say I have a uh, probably a new um, appreciation for Josh Alexander after kind of seeing him wrestle Will Ospreay live. You know, um, I mean, Will Ospreay was definitely more over of the two. But I mean, that's pretty much the case with anyone he wrestles. But I just, I just, you know, different appreciation for Josh. Um, just seeing him in lot, just seeing him person, seeing him live, uh, you know, wrestle this amazing match and and two in a row actually. I mean, to go back to back with Alex Hammerstone and then Will Osprey the next night. I mean, it it was something to behold. And uh, you guys are gonna really like the uh, the Will Osprey match. You know, Okada was in a six man, so um, you know, obviously he wasn't in there the entire time. He wrestled a, a very safe match, but uh that that main event is gonna be um Josh and Osprey. You guys are gonna enjoy that quite a bit. A little long, of course, you know, like a little long for my taste. And they did explosion, they did a couple matches. So people have been saying, Oh, is it gonna be more matches? They did two. And I don't know how many episodes of Explosion we're getting, but um, it's definitely not going to be more than one match on a on an episode, which I kind of get it because I, I didn't want to sit there and watch like four Explosion matches before Impact taping started, you know, so I can handle two. So I can kind of see when they were doing BTI, why it would always be like, you know, one match. I, I, I totally get it at this point. So um, I think that'll be the formula. I've always said the formula should be two matches, but I I think um, for the sake of not killing your audience, one makes more sense because I've been to an AEW taping where you sit. It's like you're sitting there forever. I went to uh, Rampage when Rampage was live and they actually cared about it. And I mean, they did Ring of Honor. I think it was like a hour of Ring of Honor. And I don't mean a couple matches. You know what I'm saying? Like an hour of Ring of Honor. And then Rampage, and then another hour of Ring of Honor. Um, and then I, I went to one before that that was like, uh, you know what? That was for Dynamite. I apologize. So it was like an hour of Ring of Honor, Dynamite, hour of Ring of Honor. And then I, when I went to Rampage, that one was like AEW Dark beforehand, Dark Elevation after. I'm just like, this is way too much, you know? So... I think people can handle an episode of, you know, a match or two. I'm I'm sorry of explosion. Um, of the two matches, one of them was really good. The other was not. It was kind of bullshit. Um, and that's kind of what BTI was. BTI was like one week we have something. We actually, yeah, I think I might want to watch this. And then next week it's like, no one's watching this. What is, what is this? You know? Um, and then, you know, the final thing I'll say during Snake Eyes is that no, I don't know what the storylines were. Some people have asked, you know, if they've had any improvement with that. No, we're just watching matches. We don't know what's leading up to any of them. But at the same time, I didn't feel like I was totally lost. You know, if that makes sense. I didn't feel like I was watching shit that was completely fucking random. And I think part of it is because Impact is, or some sorry, TNA is just random right now. That's how they've been really booking the show for a while. The storylines have not been... Um, it, it just hasn't been storyline heavy like it, it typically has been. So even though the matches were random, it just kind of felt like another day at the office. Like that's just kind of what they do. It just felt like business as usual. 
you know, but um, just really enjoyed myself. Uh, thanks for letting me just kind of talk here with no real game plan for the last 15 minutes. But I, you know, in closing, I just want to say I'm feeling very re-energized for what they're doing. I don't see any holes in what they're doing. The only thing that's up in the air is what is the show going to look like? That is that is it. But I think you're going to see just a very a very seismic shift in my uh, just my energy towards the company when I'm when I'm reviewing the shows going forward. I'm sure I'm still going to find things that I don't like, but um, they're they're going to be you know minuscule things like okay here's one thing I didn't like about the show here's maybe two but it's not you know I don't I think the days of just complaining about we own the night and fucking color schemes and the post production and you know I, I just think it's a it's a thing of the past so you know there's a few things they got to do they got to keep Scott off TV a little bit more um you know not play music in the background of everything uh you know Tom Hannafin has to let up on first time ever matchup and um you know so there's some so there's some minor things but right now uh this company is back I am very excited for 2024.